Hello everybody, this is a, a Instagram live streaming from Arm Observatory uh, with Violet, Observa uh, Violet in Pelicetti, I mean, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, astronomical jets. Um, we're waiting for Violet to join us, um, so uh, any moment, and we we'll to start. Just, okay, Violet. Now... And we're gonna be ready. Is everybody hearing okay? Do you hear? Do you, do you see us? Hi, Good. yes, I see you. Hi. Hi, Violet, how are you? Good, thank you, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Where is everybody joining us? Please tell us. I'm preparing the, the images we're gonna show. Excellent. How's the how's the weather around your house? <laughs> it's it's actually really nice. I I am getting a bit of sun. It was very cold this week, and so finally we're enjoying a little bit of sun, uh, since we're gonna be closed at home for for quite a while. We at least have to for get for quite a while. Yeah, we're yeah. we're starting lockdown t tonight. Tonight uh, we start a citywide lockdown here in Santiago, so yeah. it's gonna be interesting times. But hopefully it, it does something good. Excellent, excellent. So today I, I was telling people uh, we're going to talk about astronomical jets. Yes. Is that okay? And, yes. Uh, we're, tell us a little, yeah. a little more about you. Why, why are you interested in astronomical jets? Um, well, it's actually, um, I, I have to say astronomical jets are some of the things that I find the coolest in the universe. Um, they are very mysterious, and there's a lot of questions around them. Um, they are closely related to another cos cosmological mystery that many people love, uh, which are black holes. And in particular, they're related to, well, they can be related to small black holes, but in, in particular, the ones I like are related to supermassive black holes. So often, or I should say sometimes, when you have a supermassive black hole, you have a jet forming. And so these jets have a lot of weird things happening to them. Um, things that kind of our physics is struggles to understand. And that's why I, th I think they're amazing. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hey, Rolf is joining us. Hi, Rolf, how are you? Hi, Ralph. Good to see you on your fuzzy picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm almost there with the. Okay, so. And there's my there. friend Christopher also. Hi. I mean, so uh, let's send me some pictures to, to show you. So let's start with the first one. This is a Hubble picture from a, a galaxy no can you tell what can you tell us a little so yes I, I sent i sent some pictures to to you uh, just to illustrate a little bit my point and so i'm going to talk about jets but before i tell you about how jets are formed i would like to tell you about black holes so we know that at the center or all galaxies there is a supermassive black hole some of these black holes are are, are dormant they're sleeping they're inactive and this is a galaxy. This is a normal galaxy from the Hubble Heritage team. It's a gorgeous picture from Hubble. It shows, you know, a galaxy a bit like the Milky Way. It's slightly different, but not that much. There's a very bright center. And then in the suburbs we live, we know there is a supermassive black hole because we have studied a bunch of galaxies and we see that the high mass is located at the very, very center. Now this galaxy in particular is not active. There's nothing much happening. But if you go to the next slide, I'll see the other extreme. I'm gonna show you a picture of a galaxy that has an active core, a black hole that is actually eating. So see here, there is, a gal there is the same galaxy sort of disk. This is slightly different angle, but it's the same galaxy. But see what happens when the black hole is active. There is this huge jet that extends much, much, much beyond the galaxy. 
these jets are enormous. And if you have to imagine the black hole, even though it's very massive, it's very heavy, is actually very, very small. It's a dot at the center. So you have a little dot, like a pixel in this picture, that is creating these jets. So the energy, it's like a huge explosion. The energy that goes into that is enormous. And it's not an explosion. This is a continued explosion. This goes on for millions of years. So what's powering this energetics? What's going on? This is why I find it so fascinating. Also, I find fascinating, I want to know why the previous galaxy has a black hole that's not eating, that's not active, and why this one, this is Centaurus A, is a really famous galaxy. It's a really famous black hole because it's very nearby to us, we can study it. Why Centaurus A has these humongous, gorgeous jets. So this is basically motivating my interest, some of my scientific interests, uh, to, to find out the difference between the two. However, it's really hard to study these black holes. Um, I think the comparison, the fact that this, you see this image you know, on your screen and the black hole would correspond to this one pixel on the screen is correct. So even though the jets extend far out, to actually understand their emission, we have to have really good telescopes, really big, big telescopes, like they can zoom in to the really, really center. So I think the next slide sort of illustrates that a little bit. Um, Nico, could you go to the next one? Yeah. No, th okay, so I, I have another illustration, but this actually is another example. This is one of my favorite galaxies. It's called Cygnus A. I love even the name Cygnus. That's why I like it so much. Uh, but you see that you have, you don't even see the galaxy here. This is, this, these jets are so bright. But there is a galaxy. The jets are much, extend much further out beyond the galaxy. They, they start collimated. So they start like, like, like streams, thin streams that you see at the bottom. There's a thin stream. This is zoomed out. And then they hit the, the gas outside, it, which we call inter, intergalactic medium. And they make these plumes to the side, like to the right and to the left. The energy is so much in the galaxies. Whatever is happening there is so, is, 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 is so powerful. The actually in blue in this picture, what's shining light so much is from x-rays. So we even have x-ray emission, radio emission from the jets, and the optical um, from, 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 from the galaxy itself, which has nothing to do with the active galaxy. But if you zoom in to so the central pixel at the bottom, you see an image. These are the scales in parsecs, which is what we use to describe, you know, distance and, and, and sizes. You see that there, the jet that makes these huge plumes actually continues all the way, all the way, all the way to the, to the core, to the black, supermassive black hole. So I think uh, in the next picture, there, in the next image, um, there should be um, an artist's interpretation of this. Yeah, so I like this image. This is another famous uh, black hole image that I've been studying personally a lot with some, some colleagues. And it's, many people have studied this because it's very nearby and it's extremely active. Um, it's a galaxy called NGC 1068. It's not a catchy name, but I've said it so many times that actually I like the sound of it. Um, and, and anyway, so at the, this is more face on. So the galaxy is a spiral. It's very similar to our galaxy. It has this if you just looked at it from the optical, you wouldn't even guess that there's anything specific happening with it. But if you zoom in, and here, uh, uh, this is just an artist's impression, but it illustrates how much you have to zoom into the very center. You have the image of uh, what we call the torus. The torus is a reservoir material that is surrounding the black hole and hides it from you. So the black hole is not naked, it's actually hidden by this this, this reservoir material that we think actually hides it from view, from a telescope. And, and you can see there's a lot of light coming from the center. That light is actually the black hole shining out, the black hole eating. And if you looked in the radio, I don't have a radio image because I didn't want to talk on NGC 1068. But if you looked in the radio, you also see these amazing jets coming out. So what's the next picture? Let's see what else I put there. Right. This one is definitely, um, if you had to go like through 
the, 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 you know, the, the picture of the most famous active galaxies and jets and black holes, this one would win definitely a prize for the most famous one. I think this is um, a, an active galaxy, namely a black hole and a jet that all of you have heard, namely a year ago. This is the one for which we found the first ever image of a supermassive black hole. And as you all know, we participated in that image. Alma was part of the observations and Alma played a very critical role. And so this is the jet. So that image is a very, 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 very central picture. But if you zoom out a little bit, there is a jet. This black hole is emitting some gas and it's emitting gas um, so the center picture, the one with the plumes and this kind of fluffy yellow stuff in the very center, that is what it looks like from far away. And you see that there is a jet going this way to the, to the side, right? And then it hits something, which is probably intergalactic material, and it becomes, and it becomes puffed up because it's, it's, it's moving out. So you have a black hole. Black hole emits a jet, and this jet sort of suddenly moves, 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 and suddenly hits something and sort of starts, you know, diffusing. And this is exactly what's happening here at the center. Then we start zooming in because we really want to understand how the hell is this jet forming? How can you accelerate any particle, anything, so far without an engine? anywhere along the jet, right? The engine is at the center. How can you push the gas so far out? Hola, Ramiro. <laughs> I hear a kid. Um, so, uh, so you're zooming in. So I don't know if you see the red bars. We're zooming in closer to the center and you see the jet is, a, is like, it's like, it's like an exhaust pipe, right? It's just like pushing material out into the galaxy. <laughs> we lost the picture. We lost Nico. And then you keep zooming in, I'm and the jet persists closer and closer in. Good. Sure, no worries. I fully understand. Okay. So, and, and so you keep going to the right, and you keep... But you know, there's another thing that's quite nice. The jet is still collimated. It's still very, very thin. And it's thin all the way down until the supermassive black hole. And at the very center, there is that image that you've all seen, the image of the ring that we all love and, and know by now. Uh, for which we had lots of funny things. Um, so this is this is a hall of fame, and I hope I've I've trickled your curiosity a little bit as of what these jets are, what's emitting them, and what do they do. We know some things about these jets. We know that more or less, more or less, and this is important, more or less, how they're emitted. But there are some things we do know. What we think is happening is that what the theorists. Uh, tell us is, hap is happening is that there's a supermassive black hole which is like a dot you can you can think of it as our sun in a way and around the black hole there is material which is you know orbiting it it's circulating it, it's going to eventually fall into the black hole it's not that different from the sun and you know the planets orbiting the sun However, the density is much higher because these black holes are much heavier than our sun. And so the material that they're attracting is actually becomes much denser and hotter. We think that there are, um, that there are magnetic fields that become through, because the, the, the material falling in, it becomes really hot. It becomes ionized. It loses electrons. And it starts creating a magnetic field, which becomes very important. Now, these fields create field lines. You've all seen this in school. And these field lines manage to extract angular momentum from the disk in the form of some winds and jets. In other words, the jets are necessary for the black holes to eat. The black hole, you know, the energy is removed from the disk so that the, the material can fall into the black hole. When the material falls into the black hole on top of it, we actually have a secondary emission of some of the material escapes. Now, you all know that people say, what goes into the black hole stays in the black hole. If a black hole eats or something falls into it, if we were to fall into a black hole, we wouldn't ever, ever, ever come out again. And so you will ask, why is the jet coming out of the black hole then? You know? 
Some of it is wind, some of it is angular momentum extraction, but there is a jet that's coming from the very, very central black hole. How does that happen? All our physics tells us nothing escapes a black hole, but we know it does. We know some, why do we know? Because we bloody see it. If we didn't see it, mathematics would say, no, there's no such thing. So we are trying to really get closer with our telescopes to solve that mystery, to get to the key of that. What is launching the black hole and how does material escape from it? So let's see if there's some um, observations that were taken last year with the Event Horizon Telescope and they gave us the image of M87, the actual black hole picture. But some more images were taken at the same time and are now being released of another uh, supermassive black hole in a galaxy called, another fancy name, um, 3C279. Okay, so bef uh, before we get to that, I had added some more pictures from M87. This is the same galaxy as before, sorry about the confusion. But here you see what, on the left is what you saw before, these plumes, kind of like looks like smoke, you know, in a room. However, these are collimated. That means it's pushing material out. And then as you zoom in, um, so the pictures more to the right are getting closer and closer in. So the picture to the furthest right, really, really close. Thank you, Nico. This one is red and purple. And you see two things like going out like this, like a V. Thank you. That's perfect. So at the top, that white dot, that is the black hole. There's no hole here because the resolution is not as good. But that is the black hole. And you see already here... This is like new stuff. This is, you know, recent observations. We're getting closer thanks to our technology and we're actually seeing, you know, getting to the key of that mystery. We can see that, hold on, the jet is not thin, it's a V. It's actually, it comes out of the black hole, not like this, but like this. That is giving us clues about what's happening. Okay, so this is M87. And then what is the next picture? Sorry, um, let's see if I... Yeah, so yeah, we can skip this one. This is, um, so this is the, then we have the optical picture of M87. This is the, the jet as we'd see for the Hubble, the same jet that we see. And you can see at the center, there is a black hole. You have the bright, bright spot to the left. These are different pictures because these are different dates. Because this black hole is eating. As it eats, it becomes brighter and duller, duller and duller. And so you can see it's like, You know, this material that comes out is, is getting. So in the next slide, uh, there is a bit of a more of a um, schematic picture of what I described you earlier, which is what the hell is going on at the center. So this is if we had God's eyes, a perfect telescope, absolute perfect resolution. Maybe this is what we would see. And what we see is here to the left you know, is our, is our schematic understanding of the black hole. There is a dark dot at the center, which is a creating material, right? It's really heavy, has a lot of gravity. Material eventually will fall into it. And it starts orbiting at the beginning. If, if you just give it enough time, it will just orbit for a very long time. But something is, just, is, 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 is you know, it gets really hot. Magnetic fields play a role. And some of this pushed out. So the material starts getting closer and closer into the black hole and eventually as it falls into it these two plumes, these two amazing jets are expelled and we see them far out. The more the black hole eats the stronger the jets. The more active it is, the more powerful the jets. We also know that something that's really important this is also re recently, re relatively recent development for the black hole to emanate these jets, it doesn't only have to eat, it has to have a very high spin. Spin means that it actually is rotating. The black hole doesn't rotate, it probably doesn't emit jets. So how, how about that works? Again, the details are not completely understood, but we're getting more and more clues and this is one of them. So it has, the black hole has to rotate and probably drag some of that material around. So to the right, just for you guys to remember, in case you were you weren't paying attention to last, uh, you were at Earth. But here is the picture of the actual supermassive black hole in M87. So this is zooming in, all the way to the very center, when we saw that there is a hole indeed there. 
Okay, so um, this is M87. We, I'm going to show you another picture of uh, another supermassive black hole active galaxy that was taken this time in a galaxy called uh, 3C84. This is a very famous uh, AGN as well. Um, so what I'm showing you here, it was a nature paper released a couple of years ago, uh, published a couple of years ago. And um, these observations were really breathtaking. Why? Because we are actually finding, getting close to the launching point of the jets. So we can actually have jet emission that is connected all the way to the core. So if you go up, sorry, to the previous one, uh, Nico. Okay, so we go up here to the previous one at the center where it says core, there is this red material. And to the south, to the, to the bottom, you can see um, the black, like the jet, this, this jet being launched. And the thing that's mind boggling, I don't know if anybody can see, look at this picture and tell me what they think is surprising. I, I take bets. People can write their ideas if they want. This bit was very, 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 um, very shocking to, to many people. And this is why it was published in Nature. It did not display what we were expecting for a supermassive black hole jet launch. It was displaying something slightly different. While you think about why this, this black hole launching is surprising, I would like to um, also highlight something that I've not discussed openly, but I think it's very important to, 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 to highlight. Some of these jets, you will have noticed, look like they only have one side. So when the black hole uh, emits, so if you go back one picture, Nico, when, uh, to the left, yeah, please, to the model. So to, when the black hole, um, when the black hole emits these jets, it emits the jet, everything is symmetric. So the black hole, you know, rotates and they stuff rotating and then stuff falling onto the black hole and the jets are emitted, but they're not just emitted one-sided, they're emitted to the north and to the south. This is always true. We expect all these black holes to be always symmetric, okay? But as you go to the next picture, it's 3 ct 84 you know, these are all really well-studied galaxies. I know their names, like they're my friends. I, I don't have, you know, for you, maybe the thing like, you know, um, these are new observations, but this is like, you know, the end of many years of research for many people. This, this, anyway, so you're still thinking about why this is surprising, but I just want to highlight the fact that we only see one jet simply because this jet is pointing away from us. This is a, an, um, an effect from what, you know, from Einstein, which is expected from, from basically some um, basic equations, and it's called Doppler boosting. So basically what we're seeing is that the jet at the bottom, you know, going to the south is pointing towards us, and so it's Doppler boosted. It's going at the speed of light or close to the speed of light. So this jet is emitted really, really fast, almost at the speed of light. These are electrons and pros positrons and protons. And they go really fast. And because they go so fast in our direction, they get more luminous. Whereas the ones that go away from us, they get fainter. So we're just missing half of the electrons because they're going really fast in the opposite direction. And they're de-boosted. Okay? This is a detour, not the point here. So if anybody knows, if no, I can tell you why this was surprising, if you've already thought about it. The, the, the picture of this jet was so shocking because when the jet comes close to the black hole emission, the emission does not come out of a single point. The emission comes from a wide angle. So what we would expect is something that was coming out of a point like a triangle, like this, wide angle, starting wide angle and going like this, like this, okay? But that's not what we see. We see two parallel lines, shocker. Maybe the jets don't come from black holes at all. We've been thinking this for the last 50 years or more, 100 years, I think, since the discovery of the energy system. But they are coming from the accretion disk. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but it is a huge deal because it changes completely our understanding how jets are launched. And these jets are really important for black hole physics. So this is not the final answer, but this 
recent, this is two years ago, when this came out, was a huge surprise to the community. So I think now I'd like to move to the actual latest press release that came out two weeks ago, and AMA published this on our, on our websites. So these are observations taken with AMA and the EHT, the same array, exactly actually the same observations that we took uh, two years ago, 17 or three years ago now, with, with M87 and say just start, everybody's waiting to see. <laughs> but uh, um, it was also taken at the time. So this is 3C273. Sorry. Um, and, and I would like to just, okay. And, and this presented another big surprise. So if you go to the left, uh, the first picture, this is 20 micro arc second resolution. So we really are getting close to that black hole, but clo not too close, but close enough that we can see the jet being launched. Okay, so we see the jet close up and then in the middle, you're getting closer in, you know, every time we see that basically the little square that's you know, like dotted square at the top, that's what we're zooming in into every time. And then we get into that square, closer to the black hole. And then came another big surprise, similar to the one I showed you in the previous slide. Instead of seeing the jet coming out of the black hole, we again, we see the jet coming from an extended emission. It's perpendicular to the jet and it's kind of flat. It looks like a tea or like a flower or a mushroom. I don't know how you would describe it. Um, so that was, again, a shocker and it kind of goes in the same direction as the previous one so this is two years two wait two weeks ago this is really you know hot off the press um state of the art jet um jet studies and again you see that the black hole is you know the emission is not from a single region but it's from an extended region questions is that really the core we're seeing could that be part of the jet could it be a knot could it be a standing wave could it be like the jet hitting some material in the galaxy. Plausible question, a plausible alternative. So this is band, this is ALMA band six, so it's 230 gigahertz. And it's very, it's, it is possible, but we cannot tell from observations yet. But the bottom line is that this is raising more, even more questions about jet formation, and that it's possible that what we thought was you know, how jets are formed, maybe um, it's not, it's not what it is. Okay, so I think that's the end of my, my sort of introduction here to jets and what we know. Uh, there's two more slides. One is uh, the next one is simply some, um, I wanted to share with you some of our simulations about jet formation. And you see here, just to highlight, this is tiny, tiny resolutions, you know, something around the size of, you know, the core of the AGN, really, like, you know, the solar system, even like, you know, but this is what happens in those scales. I'm not saying this is, this is those, those scales, like small scales. And you can see that you have a black hole and then some emission of the jet, the launch of the jet. Um, and then the opening angle is a big unknown. And then at the end, I have a one very last slide to remind you all of the beauty of our observations uh, and our biggest results, um, you know, so a big highlight of our, of, our, of our work in the last year. Um, so I, that's it from now. I'm ha really happy to take questions um, regarding, uh, regarding jet formation and regarding uh, this latest result. Thank you, Violet. Thank you. So, um, the, uh, someone was asking for the for the reference uh, on Arxiv and on the Alma website. You can find the press release, and inside the press release, you can find the actual uh, paper. So, uh, it's the easiest way, I think, to to get to it. Uh, so, uh, we have questions. It's uh, uh, from Asano, Mr. Asano. Where does that data go? Uh, inside of a black hole if nothing can be created or destroyed. So when, when a black hole eats something, uh, where does... 
Where does the data go? Oh, this I this is a very what happens to the information? Sorry, my kids are back. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> uh, just... <laughs> and it's gonna be no worries, the, no the quiet is over. So information must be stored somewhere inside the black hole. We all know it, it probably takes a different form. Um, so this is my daughter. <laughs> Hola. She's two. Que chara fe. Okay, poi per dire parliamo, ora non la devi fare. Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, I the, so information is 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 correct. Information is is never destroyed or created, it's just transformed. So it probably takes a different shape and a different, it, you know, it becomes uh, maybe new physics, maybe stuff we don't know yet, but it's definitely not destroyed. Okay. Uh, somebody is asking if uh, this has anything to do with uh, Hawking's radiation, with, if the jets have anything to do with the Hawking's radiation. Um, no, not, not directly. So Hawking radiation is another one of those, it's a very similar paradox in a way. Because Hawking radiation is just what happens to a black hole that's not accreting, it would eventually evaporate, which is goes against the principle again that the black hole nothing can escape. So our current physics understanding. So while while the paradox is very similar, it's a different process. Whereas here I'm talking about material escaping is a result of accretion. Right. Whereas the Hawking radiation is not a result of accretion, it's really just evaporation. Uh, is there a difference uh, with um, the thermal and non-thermal components of the accretion disk? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, that's, a, uh, that's another very good question. Um, the non-thermal, so basically the accretion disk, as, as material is going into the black hole, it gets hotter because it becomes, you know, it's basically due to viscosity. You know, there is a lot, there's a lot of, um, the densities are really, really high and the material moves very fast. Everything in this last accretion part is extremely hot, which means it's fully ionized. So we only have no, we have no molecules. Even if you had molecules, they would be destroyed, right? It's just cooked to, you know, millions of Kelvin. That's where the X-rays are coming from. That's where this, you know, huge X-ray halo that we saw showed you in Sigma say that's where it's coming from. That should come from the accretion disk. However, if you move further out in the accretion disk, things become quieter. You know, it's like getting out of city center where all the noise comes from, and you go to the suburbs. You know, it's still kind of close to the inner city, but things are very quiet. And that's actually what's happening. So, the torus, you know, the the stuff that's further out. The material that's also going to fall into the black hole, it's much cooler, and then you have a lot of molecules. And those molecules we can observe directly with ALMA, and we do a lot. This is one of our main jobs at ALMA is to observe the molecules uh, well, in AGM. I hope that answers the question. Uh, is, the, uh, is our universe inside a giant black hole, and we are the singularity at the singularity would that be a possibility a universe inside a giant black hole uh i i know if you know if i i if um so you know i don't know how to uh, there are many ways to answer that i'm trying to find for my favorite one the truth is that if you want to take this if you want me to give you a serious answer <laughs> uh probably not because inside a black hole, things are very, very dense, and probably no life can exist. The inside a black hole is like, it's like the black hole is nothing else than really dense material. There's nothing exotic about a black hole, really. It's just a really highly compressed matter, and it's compressed really high densities. It's probable that new particles exist in the center that we don't know yet from our physics. But beyond that, um, we wouldn't survive inside, you know, if you were compressed to 
the size of a hammer. And, and there's not, nothing much different than that inside a black hole. It's just really, really massive and very, very small. It's a result of a huge implosion and accretion. Okay. Um, do you think the jets, uh, uh, how will look the jets if we get as near as possible from the event horizon? Um, I think this is a, 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 another lovely question. I, so in the image of M87 that, I, you know, that you all saw, everybody knows, and people have been talking, this is discussed in the papers, that what we're seeing is probably the accretion plus on top uh, a jet emission component already visible there. And people have been spending the last year trying to separate the two. So we know that uh, there is jet emission around the accretion disk. It comes from there, but separating the disk and the jet is what's being very, very challenging. So what it looks like, we don't know yet, but we know that the two things over, are overlaying each other. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So I think uh, wait, maybe one more question and, and we'll let you go with the kids. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Uh, so somebody is asking uh, if uh, if studying maser emission could help explain the shape of the jets. Um, if studying maser emission will help understand the shape of the jets. Uh, it's, uh, actually, that's a, a lovely question because I love masers. Do people know that? Um, so I do, so I do try maybe to Maybe what's a maser? What's a maser? So I do, I do use masers to study the black holes. So around, ma maser is like um, emission from, it, people compare with lasers. So they're actually microwave lasers. This, they occur naturally in nature. So they're, for example, the masers that we know are associated with black holes are water masers. So we know they're water molecules that under certain conditions emit this microwave laser type emission. And the cool thing is that imagine if somebody had a really powerful laser from this stuff, like pointing in our direction, you could actually see it. And so that's what we do. We, we look at different maser emission and we start making maps in 3D where we can actually see, you know, there's one here, one here, one here, and then we get like sort of these shapes. The thing is that these masers, um, they can arise from near the other black hole, but because they're molecular bound, so they, they come from molecules and what I was saying before, they do not come from the inner accretion disk, they come from further out. And so they do tell us a lot about accretion. They do tell us about how material is, is, is uh, accreted into the black hole, but they're not close enough to tell us about how the jets are formed yet. There are some masers that could be coming from the jet itself. I'm looking for them. <laughs> I haven't found them yet. <laughs> um, but I would like I would like to also say one one last thing that um, masers definitely are a very useful way to study uh, the black holes and, and 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 the shapes around it. Excellent, excellent. Well, I think uh, we're gonna stop now, so Violet can uh, get back to to her kids. Yeah, um, that's good. Thank you. Can I can thank I just? You, Nico, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was looking, I haven't read all the questions, so, um, but there is one that kept coming up and I'd like to just comment on it. It's like, what about CJ Star? Okay, so CJ Star is, I uh, just want to say a couple of words about it. People will know it's the supermassive black hole, the center of our own galaxy, right? Uh, it is also supermassive. It is slightly less massive than those ones I showed you. Those, well, those ones are like really the bigger one. Sage's star is only interesting to us because it's closer so we can study better. It's our own, it's like, you know, our own home. So we wanna know what's going on at the center of our own home. Um, we did take Sage's star data three years ago. Nico knows very well. And, uh, and data is being processed. Uh, there may or may not be a hole, there may or may not be a jet. So stay tuned. It is coming, the, the, so the EHT, the challenges to release that data are bigger than they are 
with M87 and other galaxies that I've shown you. Um, so I just want to say data's been taken, it's been processed, it's been analyzed, people are trying to make, make understand it. Sage's star, however, does not have very powerful jets. Because even though it's a black hole, supermassive black hole, and it's accreting a little, it's not eating very much. So just so you know, it doesn't have this magnificent jet. If it did, we might be fried. Excellent. So, oh, uh, I, okay, that was. I was uh, telling, uh, wanted to say, there are some people who are asking if, uh, if um, we can do this one in Spanish. So I think we can maybe next week. With the let uh, date to be confirmed, mm -hmm. but stay tuned with us. So uh, I'm just gonna see it in Spanish, so people can understand it in Spanish. Si alguien quiere ver esto en español, lo volveremos a repetir la próxima semana en español con Violet. So uh, uh, síganos para uh, uh, para estar al tanto de cuando sea. Uh, la fecha está por definir aún. And uh, so thank you again very much, Violet, for joining us this afternoon. I'd and, like to join. Uh, I'd like to say goodbye to everyone and also my friends. Join me and say their names. I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, because Natalie, because Christopher and all the others have have okay. forgotten or missed. <laughs> goodbye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye. -bye. Bye.